I created a tutorial on motion design tunnels before, and as an example, I used this tunnel by Ordinary Folk. And then I received this comment from Minimations. Could you please break down the Ordinary Folks one? And I thought, yes. Yes, I can. So that's what we're going to do in this video, but be warned, this turned out to be an advanced animation requiring knowledge of 3D and it's not suitable for beginners. So when I got started to figure out how they created this tunnel, I thought it looked pretty simple and that this was gonna be an easy win. Well, as it turned out, this was misplaced confidence. It was easy enough to get this part of the animation right, where the tunnel is just coming straight at us. So let's start there. Jumping into After Effects, we have a 1080p comp, called Tunnel. Let's double click the rectangle tool to create a shape layer the size of the screen and give it the name Shape1. While I was figuring this out, I used grayscale shapes to keep things simple, so let's do the same. Let's drop in two scale keyframes, 16 frames apart, and then drop the first keyframe to zero. Now, if we add a 60% influence to the easing on the left keyframe, we get this. Now we can duplicate this layer and change its color to white. Let's duplicate both of these and move them to the top of the timeline and repeat so that we get six layers, alternating between gray and white colors. Now if we offset these layers by two frames each, you can see we're starting to get what we're looking for. The reason we went with six layers is because that's how many colors ordinary folk used for their tunnel, so we're gonna do the same. I created a new color palette for the tunnel in Illustrator, as you can see, and this is what that looks like applied to our After Effects shape layers. Now let's select all our layers, change their color, duplicate them with Ctrl D, move them to the top, shift them to the right to continue our sequence, and change their layer color as well. Let's repeat this step once more so that our tunnel animates for the right length. And this is what we get. Now we can pre-comp all of these layers like this and call it Tunnel Pre. For this next step to work, we need two unique layers, so let's duplicate this comp layer and give it a new color. Let's right click, go to reveal, and then select reveal layer source in project. Let's duplicate the comp in the project window, hit enter to rename, and add var to the end of the name. Now, making sure our tunnel var is selected in our project window, we can click back onto our second tunnel layer in the timeline and then use the shortcut Control alt and forward slash to replace that layer in the timeline with our variation. Next, let's separate the top and bottom quadrants from the left and right quadrants, and one of the many ways to do that is using a mask. So let's select our second tunnel comp and grab our pen tool and just start creating a mask like this, making sure that we're aligning our mask to our diagonal lines. And you'll see when I get to the second middle point, I can only click a bit outside of the middle. So let's just do that for now and then continue until we close our mask. Now we can zoom in and align our middle points to the center. Perhaps a bit of a sloppy way to do this, but no one but us will know, so don't even worry about it. So now we have a bottom layer, which includes the full tunnel and our top layer, which only shows the top and bottom. Now we're going to finish off this animation by going inside our pre-comp. And why does that sound so sexual to me? Maybe this comment is right. Maybe I am obsessed. Maybe it is getting cringe. But I'm sorry, at Angel f Music, I'm just trying to flip horizontal and ease in and ease out until I finish my animation. It's not my fault After Effects, it's just so damn sexy. So now we're gonna select our third set of layers, duplicate them, shift them over like we've done before, and change their color. This allows us to select all our layers and shift them over to the left by six frames. Now we can just hide the first three layers and the last three layers to maintain the same length of animation, but we have now offset the colors. If we go back into our main comp and play the animation, you'll see what we've done. And that's pretty satisfying already. I mean, I can't be the only one who's turned on by this, right? The final thing we need to do is fix the end of the tunnel so that the end of the animation results in a single green color. And we can do that by going into our bottom comp layer where we just need to change the color of our last shape to green and this is what we get. So that's all good and well, but for the life of me, I couldn't figure out how they got their tunnel to twist like that. I tried animating mats, masking, the twill effect, even CC bend it. Anything I thought could possibly get me there if I just used it in the right way. And this went on for literally about five hours. I was scrambling at this point, checking their play tab for any hints, but nothing. I was almost ready to accept defeat, leaving my honor in shambles to the point where the only option was Harakiri. Then I had a thought. If you've watched my tutorial on gradient aura circles, you know ordinary folk like to show some process work 
for their animations. So maybe, just maybe, they had some for this animation. I scrolled down with anticipation, and boom, there it was. No fucking wonder I was having problems reverse engineering this bitch. It was created in Cinnamon 4D, and I could see exactly what they did here. So, like Google would say, it is enough talking, so let's do it. So we have the tunnel we made in After Effects, so let's render this animation like this, using the H.264 codec at 15 megabytes per second. Then, back in our tunnel comp, we can go up to Layer, New, Maxon Cinema 4D File. This will prompt us to save the file somewhere, so pick a folder and name it 3D Tunnel and hit save. Now Cinema 4D Lite will open, and in case you didn't know this, this is included for free in your After Effects subscription. So firstly, we're going to click this cube button to create a cube, and we're going to change the X and Y sizes to 1920 by 1080 to match our After Effects comp, and then change the Z size to 1080 as well. This next step is critical. We need to change our Z segments to 20 because without this, our twist will not work. Moving on, let's click and hold our transformer button and select our taper transformer. If we click and drag it onto our cube, it gets nested underneath and can affect our shape. In the attributes tab, we can change the alignment to Z plus and click fit to parent to resize the transformer. Now, if we change the strength to 100%, we get a nice taper and to get rid of the curve, we can just reduce the curvature to zero. At this point, we can right click our cube and select current state to object, and then delete the top cube so that we get a single editable shape. Now, I'm sure some Cinnamon 4D experts will call this out, so a little bit of admin on our tip is necessary. And we all know how important self-love is, so let's come up to the top here and make sure that we have this points button selected. Then let's click and hold our selection tool and change it to rectangle selection. Then we can click and drag over our tip to select our points. You'll see there are four points selected, and so to make this a single point, we can now click on our move tool and right click on these points and select optimize. And now it is just a single point. Next, we can click on our polygon button, which allows us to click on our front polygon and hit backspace to delete it. Now, if we click this button, we open our materials panel where we can click this plus sign to add a material and double click to rename it tunnel texture. Let's double click our texture to open up this panel and then turn off both color and reflectance and then turn on luminance. Using luminance ensures that we will get flat colors for our render. Let's click this button next to texture, navigate to our tunnel render, select it, click open. Now our texture will be loaded and the last thing we need to do is go down to viewport and turn on animate preview and change the texture preview size to something larger. This ensures that our video actually plays and that it is not blurry in the viewport. Now let's close this window and then click and drag our texture onto our object. Now if we scrub through our timeline, you can see our video playing on the object. However, it is not showing the way we would like, so to fix this, let's make sure the material tag next to our cube is selected, and then we can change the projection to flat and turn off tile. Now let's click into the coordinates tab and change the X scale to 960 and the Y scale to 540, and now we have what we're looking for. And before we move on to creating that sexy twist, if you found value in this tutorial, hit that like button, and while you're at it, send it to someone who likes ordinary folks' work and would appreciate this breakdown. Now, to get that twist, it's actually very simple. We just need to click and hold our transformer button and select twist. Then, just like before, let's click and drag our twist onto our cube to nest it. Again, let's click Z plus for our alignment and then foot to parent. And then theoretically, if we change the angle, we should get what we're after. But as you can see, that is not the case. The texture is not being affected properly by the transformer. So to fix this, we need to select our cube, go up to tags, material tags, and then add the pin material tag. And now when we adjust the angle on our twist transformer, we get what we're looking for. Next, we just have some final admin to make sure everything is working the way we need it to. So let's add a camera to the scene with this button and then right click any of the transform properties and click reset all. Now, if we click the middle mouse button or scroll wheel in our viewport, our view changes and we get these three additional views. And we're going to use these to line up our camera so that it faces our object head on and frames the animation. And there's probably a better, faster way to do this, but I don't know what that is. So this is what you get. Now to animate our twist, let's select our twist transformer and then scrub through to about 30 frames into our timeline and then click this keyframe button. 
Now let's scrub through to just before the end and change the angle to about 50 before clicking the keyframe button again. Now let's change our camera to camera like this and then go up to edit, project settings and change our FPS to 24 to match our After Effects composition. Let's also click on our render settings button and then change our width to 1920 and our height to 1080 and again change our FPS to 24. Now let's jump back into After Effects and you'll see we now have a Cinema 4D layer and if we click on it we can change the render settings to current and we'll get what we're looking for. And the colors got slightly washed out, most likely due to the H.264 render. So just adding in a hue saturation effect to the layer and changing the master saturation to 10 will fix that. Now let's see what we've made. And there you have it, a motion design tunnel just like the one by Ordinary Folk. I really like reverse engineering these professional animations and I would like to make a whole series out of it. So if you have any other requests, drop a comment below with a link and a timestamp and be sure to make it extra sexy. Take it easy ease and subscribe for more motion XP.